Hey guys, in this tutorial, I will be creating a simple web app that checks whether a word is a palindrome or not. Here, the word madam is shown as a palindrome as it is spelled the same way backwards and forwards. On the other hand, the word coding is shown as not a palindrome as it isn't spelled the same way backwards and forwards. If we enter an empty word, the web page alerts us that the input field cannot be empty. Let us try the same for some other words. Here, race car is a palindrome and hence the app notifies us that yes, it's a palindrome. We begin with the CSS code. We first set some default styles for all the HTML elements in the document. It removes the default paddings and margins and sets the box sizing property to border box. It also removes the outline and sets the font family to poppins. Next up, we set the background color of the body element to a pleasant blue color. Now coming to the HTML code, we have a container div which will hold all the content of our application. Inside the container, we have a heading with the class of app title that says, is it a palindrome? Next, we have a div with class input wrapper. This is where our input field and button will go. Inside the input wrapper, we have an input field with type of text and an ID of input text. This is where the user will enter the word where they want to check if it is a palindrome. We also set a placeholder which says enter a word. We also have a button with an ID of BTN which will trigger the check. Finally, we have a paragraph element with an ID of result. This is where we will display the result of palindrome check. Now going back to CSS, we style the container div by setting the width to 90% and max width to 31.25 em the container has a white background color it also has a padding of 4 em on the top and bottom and 3 em padding on left and right also it has a border radius of 0.5 em which gives it rounded corners The box shadow gives it a subtle shadow effect. Next, the position is set to absolute. And the transform property is used to center it both horizontally and vertically on the page. We then style the app title which is followed by the styling of input wrapper. We use CSS grid to create a 9 column and 3 column layout. with a gap of 1 em between the columns. 
It also has margin of 2 EM on top and 1 EM on the bottom. Next up, we style the input field by removing all the borders. We then add a subtle border to the input field. On focus, the bottom border changes its color to blue to add a visual feedback. Now here, you can see how the bottom border changes its color when the input element is focused. Next, we style the paragraph element. The paragraph element consists of text that will be generated by JavaScript. For now, we input a text called demo text into the paragraph element. We set the text align to center, color to white. Now there are two classes. One is a success class and one is an error class. These two classes will be added by JavaScript based on the message that whether a word is a palindrome or not. Success class will be added when the word is a palindrome, while error class will be added when the word is not a palindrome. Here I am using a shade of green for success class and a shade of red for the error class. We add an animation called pop which makes the message pop up every time we click on check. Let us try adding the success class to the P element. You can see how the element looks like. Now we can go ahead and style the P element. The P element will also contain a span element for which we already add a styling.
once again we go back to html and remove the success class do not forget to remove this success class now moving on to javascript first we select three dom elements using document dot query selector function these elements are the button the input field and the paragraph element these are the three elements we will be manipulating in our code remember to mention the correct id for each of the query selector next we add an event listener to the button the event we are listening for is a click event and the callback function that's executed when the event occurs gets the value of the input field along with getting the value from the text field we also remove white spaces from both the sides of the text we do so by using the trim function the function also checks if the input field is empty or not if the input field is empty that is if the length of the text is equal to 0 the app alerts us that the input field cannot be empty return exits the function if the input field is empty to check if the result string is a palindrome we split the string into an array of characters using the split method the reverse method 
is called on the array of characters to reverse the order of characters we call the join function method to be called on reversed array to join the reversed characters back together to form a string if the reverse string is equal to the original string it means that the text is a palindrome now comes the exciting part we create a message that will be displayed to the user based on whether the input is a palindrome or not we use a ternary operator to check if the is palindrome is true or false if it is true we create a message with span element that says yes else we create a message that says no Finally, we update the result elements HTML content with the message and remove any existing error or success classes using class list dot remove function. We then use the set timeout method. with a delay of 10 milliseconds to add the appropriate error or success class to the result element this adds a small delay to the class addition which creates a nice animation effect on the message Finally we update the result element with the message remove any previous styling classes and add appropriate class to the style the message based on whether it's a palindrome or not Now let us try in putting some palindromes and non palindromes to check whether the app is working or not As you can see here the app is working perfectly and that's it i hope you found this explanation helpful don't forget to like and subscribe for more coding tutorials and explanations and i'll see you in the next video